Adjumani is the name of the place. Just a very small village. Now it's now on the border of uh, the South Sudan, uh, but before I'm telling the story, it wasn't far, because there wasn't such a country there in South Sudan, it was just the Sudan. And the, the refugees would come over from there into northern Uganda, and they would come to this little village called Adjumani. Now, in Adjumani there was a church, and it was most of the refugees that were in that church. And their weekly offering was never any more than one US dollar. That was a complete offering. And they would never move out of that village. They would never move even into Uganda. They would never leave that, that village. But nailed to the tree outside the church was this statement. The Adjumani Church is the centre for global impact and world evangelism. Come on! <laughs> they had captured something or the global heart of God. You know? And that means like outside that wee church, nailed to the tree, written in paint, the Adjumani church is a centre for globe, is a centre for, for, for global impact and world evangelism. I might be here in Canada, I might not be doing much, but what I want to do, I want to do to the best of my ability. You see, my prayer these days is God, or, or, or Jesus, I want to be the best part of your body that I can be. Amen. Because we're all part of the body of Christ. We're all supposed to be doing what Jesus set out to do in the Gospels. And you, what did we suffer here if we tell about Jesus? A wee bit of embarrassment. And because we suffer a wee bit of embarrassment, we didn't do it. Church, awake! Come on, church, awake! And put your armour on. Come out of the playground and join the battleground. Because we are battling for the souls of men and women who daily are being ushered into a lost eternity. And what we've got in our churches today is not lifeboat stations, but just aquariums where the fish come and get fed and they go away again. There was a friend called Joy who was waiting for me in the Land Rover. Now she didn't know what I wanted to do, but God did. And whenever I jumped into the Land Rover, she's come on there, I'm going to take you to Ernst. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask her. So she drove in this Land Rover across Yale, and we got the ferry over into Ernst. And then we went into a farmhouse for some lunch uh, with a, a woman called Rhoda. And uh, we had the maps out, and I'm saying, where should we start this, this prayer walk? And... Uh, they said, why don't you start it from the most northern church in Scotland? I said, that sounds a good idea. So, so we drove away to the most northern, uh, it's a Methodist church, and we drove into there, and there wasn't any rise in my spirit at all. And they said, how about this place and that place? So we drove all around Anston, I said, there's nothing rising in my spirit. And they said, let me take you up to Saxeford. And if you look on the map, Saxeford is the very last hill in Scotland. The very first one, depending on where you're going. And I want to tell you, there's nothing between Saxeford and the North Pole. So I'll tell you, when the wind blows, <laughs> if the wind blows. <laughs> and that day we were, we were up on, on Saxeford and the wind was blowing. And it was a cold, cold wind. It was a November day. And I'm standing up in Saxeford, but I felt I need to get out of the Jeep. Now, uh, Joy had to turn the Jeep round because if I'd opened the doors with the wind blowing into the door, if I take the doors off, that's the most, that's the most damaged cars in Shetland it's hinges because it's so strong wind it just if you open your door the wrong way so you've got to open your door against the wind so that it blows it shut so they said they were not going out but I said I, I need to go out on this on this last hill in Scotland and so I got out the out the jeep and I'm getting I'm not lightweight well I'm almost lightweight but, but I'm not lightweight uh, and I was getting blown across the top of that hillside really blown but I wanted to praise God. And so if anyone had been looking at this mad Scotsman, hands in the air and getting blown here, there, and, there, and just shouting and praising in the name of God. And I just felt on fire. I really did. And I knew within my heart, this is where it had to start. And it was a wild, wild night. And this house was out in the wild. I said, Andrew, there's nobody will come to a prayer meeting tonight here. In this weather. 
There were 30 people in the house. And we had the most amazing prayer meeting. <laughs> and about halfway through it, without any warning, he would say, yeah, you got the word? So I said, yeah, I've always got a word. Uh, I'll give you a word. So I spoke on the, the greatest revival prayer uh, and that Jesus ever, ever taught. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. As in heaven, so it is on the earth. That's a great revival prayer, isn't it? 